popping, man. First class Ross in the building, you understand me? It's a dirty, deadly exclusive. We ain't gonna get it nowhere else, you hear me? Good with y'all, man. First class, Rossi checking in, aka Luciano. I'm a fresh artist from New Orleans, man. It's my first time in the A. And um, feel me, I've been booking all the studios. I booked like six spots, you know, did a little studio tour, just kind of get a feel for it and shit. I'm um, trying to finish up my album and shit. I record all my own shit and um, I make all the beats. Like, I really do everything. I'm like a one man band. Uh, I run one of, one of the most popular studios in New Orleans. Called all the uh, all the hottest local talents. You feel me? Um, yeah, man. Uh, Young Greatness was one of my clients before he passed. I, I did a lot of work with him, and um, man, I'm just trying to network, bro, and uh, build a bridge, like for my clientele and myself as well. You feel me? We don't really have like the platform to take, and a lot of them do a lot of money to take. You feel me? So I'm just out of trying to build a bridge, man, and, and hold it down and try to eventually make some young niggas rich. You feel me? I the ball for me. All right, so what inspired you to kind of like get into music in the beginning, like when you first started doing music? Well, shit, I was a ball player. I used to be kind of scared to rap. Me and my older brother I used to be vibing and shit. He'll have beats playing. You know, he'll be freestyling. It made me, made me jump on that bit and that shit. That just turned into us getting a little on stage mic, the basic recording program, and that shit. In 06, when I was 16, I put the Pro Tools in the with you feel me? They had a package of the Pro Tools, the inbox. The microphone speaker, so like eight hundred dollars. I put it in a layaway and guitar center, and like at, at the beginning of the year, I got it back out at the end of the year. And shit, ever since then, like the, the studio was like a video game for me. You feel me? Hmm. It's just some shit I played with. Like I ain't really know nobody that did music. But like I said, I was a ball, I was a ball player. This shit was really like secondary. But it was something I did every day. Like I woke up in the studio every day. Hmm. Shit, that shit was in my bedroom. You feel me? That shit just grew into something I never thought it'd grow into. You did, and that's kind of been a way as an artist I could stay in the studio. Cause it's a, you know, if you know something about rap, man, it's a rich nigga sport. You feel me? It's not a broke nigga sport, and it's, it, it costs to be in the studio. So by me being an engineer, that was the way I could stay in the studio like I need to as a rapper, and then, you know, still take care of what I need to. Get up out of the streets and make all legal bread, you feel me? So, shit, it turned into me running like one of the most popular studios in the city, and I done work with a lot of different people. But, um, Man, it's crazy, man. My journey been wild. I just, you know, I just go with the cause. God damn, man. It's where that shit done led me to. Like, who are some of the artists that inspired you coming up? Cause like you're, you're, you know, you come from a, a, a you know, a city that's cut a lot of different great artists. You know, right. I mean, you speak of Young Greatness, but a there's a lot of artists even before yeah, him definitely. that came out of um, yeah. New Orleans. Most you know definitely. what I'm saying? I mean, who are some well, inspirations for you? All right, I want people to, under, I want people to understand me when I say this. You feel me? Uh, Toonji is the GOAT, Lil Wayne is the GOAT, the rapper. Nobody is better than dude, he is the best to ever rap, you feel me? Young Jeezy is my favorite rapper. So like when it came down to what I wanted to hear, put that 103 on, you feel me? And yeah, for the football game, I listened to the same song over and over. Number four on the inspiration, you know what it is. I listened to that bit over and over, that's, all, that's the only song I listened to before a game. Right. And shit. So that's really my one too, you feel me? A lot of people say they could hear that like in the music. Shit, it got like a trap Jesus feel, but I still be trying to rap like Wayne, cause that's all I know, you feel me? So like, I'm that's really my one too, you feel me? And uh, shit, Drizzy, of course, Nicky, I fuck with them. But you know, by the time I really started listening to them, I think I was who I was already. What's that process like for you in the studio? What is what We have this thing called the unheard process that people go through in the studio. What's your yeah. process like? What do you need in the studio in order to get jiggy? <laughs> for me, I'm like, I'm just addicted to the art of it. Like I'm just addicted to being in front of the microphone. So like for me, like especially recently, like I've been really into starting from scratch. It's just something about starting from nothing. Just make the beat, upload it in Pro Tools. All right, now we're gonna come on the hook. All right, now we're gonna do the verses. It's just something about that process like that really do it for me, man, and shit. I go in these modes where I just bang out three, four songs right quick. You feel me, I record. Record until my first session come for the day. 
Like most of my songs get there like four, five in the morning, cause that's when my session stop and that's the only time I get. You feel me? So shit, sometimes I really go until the first session of the next day come. And for me, I don't know. I just I just love this shit. You feel me? I guess it's like like um like a basketball player that's always in the gym shooting. Like even if he wasn't getting paid for this shit, you'd still be doing it. Mm -hmm. I was doing it when I wasn't getting paid for this shit. Right. So, so, shit, it's just what I love to do. I mean, engineering, I like helping artists to find their sound, because a lot of artists don't never get to hear what they heard in their head. And you know, that's why a lot of people say I be cheating. Because all my songs are what I heard in my head, because I can make it sound like what I heard in my head, you feel me? So, right. like, I like doing that, but as far as the passion, the passion for me is when I'm in front of the microphone. You feel me? That's how it all started. Let me ask you this. A lot of people, producers, I speak to producers all the time, a lot of people feel like engineers deserve plaques. How do you feel about oh, engineers man, getting engineers, plaques? Everything, man. Nobody can sing. I tell all my clients, but when they be worried about their notes and shit, nobody can sing. Or, like, it's somebody like me, a, a, you know, a, a decent somebody like me, that goes in there and if you hit a D flat and you're supposed to hit a C, we're going to make that D flat a C and you ain't even going to know. So, you feel me? So, it's really a all about the engineer, bro. Like, and and it's about the vibe. Like some engineers, you know, people are comfortable recording with them. It's about the vibe. Like, feel me? see, with me, they feel like they're working with an artist, so it's kind of different. Like, it's certain shit they don't even have to tell me, cause like I I attack they sh they song as if it was mine. So like, you know, I be reading people's minds as they say. But um, yeah, it's all about the engineer, man. So do you Definitely. do you believe engineers deserve to get plaques? Oh shit, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, not shit not even necessarily right. just plaques, but like Grammys. Like engineers, like producers get Grammys and whatnot, but like bigger awards than just the plaque. Like I know a lot of producers that get plaques, of course, but do engineers deserve to get like the Grammy awards and and things like that? Like they should be I mean, honored. I think the essence of that song would be there if that dude, if dude ain't whip it however he whipped it. Right. Like, like it's a lot of times like. It just be about the chemistry of it. Hmm. You feel me? The chemistry of the artist and the engineer. Like, I got a lot of people who don't even go to nobody else. Right. You feel me? So, engineers definitely uh, deserve all the no all the, uh, the notoriety that comes with, you feel me, platinum plaques and Grammys. Whatever the song get, if the producer get it, the engineer's the one that make it all come together. Right. If the songs that you don't like, it's probably because the engineer didn't put it all together. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It'd be the difference. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, so there's like a, a, a secret society when it comes to engineers too. Yeah, it's like, that's why, yeah. no, like especially here in Atlanta, there's like right. this real cult following right. as far as engineers. Is there any engineers that you've collaborated with that are just that need that 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 you know that you know that that platform? I mean, like, because this is the platform to, to put them out there. Like, mm -hmm. any engineers that you rock with really tough that deserve to be heard about, mm -hmm. even if they're from New Orleans or wherever they're from. I got a young and I used to work with and I got my homie here that's here with me now that I work with, but um other than that I haven't really banged with many like engineers as far as ones that are known. Mm -hmm. you know I, mean? Uh, I, I mean I guess by me being my own engineer, I was limited to that. For sure. It is dude, uh Dave Pensado, I used to watch all his shit on YouTube. That's how I learned how to mix like when I was young. I used to have his shit open on the phone and I'd be on my laptop and I'd just be watching his sentence and that's how I really got like the concepts of like some of, some of the concepts of like the compression and, and just coming up with a vocal chain, you feel me? I, I came up with all that shit off of him. Hmm. Like I really ain't had no type of guidance or no type of music. Like my parents didn't do nothing musical at all, so shit. Uh, as far as engineers, that's really the only dude. Where, where do you, cause really, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned, uh, not to cut you off, but you mentioned you mentioned the engineer, what was his name? Dave Pensado. He's Dave like, Pensado. Yeah, so you like mentioned Dave goats. Pensado, and he basically gave you a one-on-one -on -one course off YouTube. Right. So mm -hmm. how do you feel about this new age of music? Because like, like you said, you really didn't have any inspiration at home. You got mm -hmm. your inspiration just off of listening to music that you mm -hmm. like. Right. But how do you feel about this new new generation of music? Is that where we are? Is that where we're going into like a digital age of where kids are getting inspired off of what they hear on YouTube or what they hear absolutely. on Instagram? Facts. I think, uh, yeah, absolutely. And m me being an engineer really let me see it. Uh, like people sound like who they listen to. Like I can automatically tell. And then I don't really listen to the industry, so I don't be knowing. So I love a dude. And then the shit I love about him is what he took from the dude he listened to. <laughs> take one of my people to come break my heart and tell me no, son. Uh, you got that from Pop Smoker. You got that from this one. You feel me? So like, 
definitely it's, it's like your subconscious it's something you don't even try you subconsciously sound like what you listen to out there some people can't even help that's why i don't listen to music i mean part of it because i'm working all day and after i didn't mix shit for 12 hours i don't want to hear music mm -hmm. cut that shit off you feel me and but uh everybody sound like what they listen to shit crazy right so, so it's definitely gonna be to the point to where what's out now is it's what's gonna influence what's gonna come later mm -hmm. shit why do you think because like I've heard a lot of people say that that it's 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 harder for artists from Louisiana or from New Orleans to really kind of like bubble. Why do you think that is? Cuz we don't have like we don't have uh the industry down there like to we don't have no majors out there or no big independent label, you feel me? Like Cash Money moved after Katrina. We ain't got no major that for real for real. It's a bunch of independents and we don't have no money. We don't have nobody putting up a bag. Like that'd be a that be the difference other places, you feel me? Like you have the rapper, you have the engineer, you have the producer, you have the person that put up the money. The label. You feel me? Right. And uh you know, we just don't have that there. So we got a lot of talent, but people don't have the money it takes to get that shit out. I'll be telling them nobody gonna listen to it just cause it's out. You feel me? Like we just don't have like the the marketing and the promotion budgets going on and that's why a lot of them dudes you never heard of. Hmm. Like something I always tell them. Coca Cola is people that's addicted to that shit from babies to grandmas that'll buy it forever. They spend a million dollars on just a Super Bowl commercial. That's just one commercial, 30, just 30 seconds. Coca Cola. Yeah. So it'll make you think your unknown ass don't have to spend no money on a promotion. Right. But I can't expect you to come up with something that you don't have, so it's like, mm. it's a tough situation, you feel me? Like I record a lot of young dudes, high school dudes, you feel me? So. I mean, I think it's the lack of the the, the lack of the, the budgets and the avenues, and then the few people who are in a position of power. You feel me? They 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 the gatekeepers. They holding their hands closed. They're down. Mm -hmm. I mean, getting all they can get, but it's tough, man. It's definitely tough out there. It seems like we always have to go somewhere else, and then once we get a name somewhere else, then we can make a move. You feel me? But it's tough, bro. Real rap. Right. Well, I speak for the unheard because actually, when you when you mentioned Young Greatness, I actually did a, a interview with Young Greatness um, a long time ago on his unheard process before he passed. Um, but you you speaking to these guys that you record, right? Because like, they're going to be the ones watching this, and, and like, to, for other people who need to know this right. information, right? right? What do you tell the unheard? What do you tell those that are the underdogs or the ones that feel like they're not getting that opportunity? What do you tell them? I tell them that that's the inspiration, and you gotta start small. Basically, like you have to treat your music like a business, cause it's a business. I see, I have a business degree too, so I be trying to school them. Like it's no different, bro. It's a business, and a business you create a product, a good product that you're confident in, and then you get the product to the people. It don't matter what the product is; it's the same guidelines. But before you do anything, you gotta come up with a blueprint, even if it's small, whatever you could afford. If you can only afford starting off a couple hundred dollars a month on promotion. Get some uh, YouTube, I mean, uh, uh, the Instagram uh, promotion, little sponsor things, $10, that, $15, that. Start that. Hmm. And the next month, say you want say you want to start putting in five. And they say you want to drop an album, and this time you're going to put up a thousand. And you know, you got to just come up with a plan and a structure to make it work for you, whatever you can afford. Hmm. But you got to, like, I, I believe in simple mathematics, you feel me? You got to put together something simple, a simple way that you can accumulate some money to get yourself heard. Because if not, you're not going to get heard, but it's tough. It's tough. You feel me? They're not going to go get something off the shelf just because it's on the shelf. They have to know that it's on the shelf. You right. got to get them that. You feel me? So, I right. mean, it all starts off with a structure and a plan, bro. And once you come up with a plan, stick to it. You feel me? A lot of people's plans work, and then right when they about to get, to the final step, they give up and go left. Hmm. Man, once you come up with your plan, man, you got to work it to the end. You right. know? So I, I love that. I appreciate that right. that 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 sentiment because right. like a lot of people need to hear that. Right. What three songs, right? Mm -hmm. Like for those who have never heard you a day in their life, what mm -hmm. three songs out of your catalog do you feel like people need to go listen to that are out right now? Three that describe you as a person and as an artist. Okay, I got a, a song called On Your Job featuring Juvenile. Y'all can go check that out for sure. It's on, uh, it's everywhere. Um, Grind For It featuring Kid Kid. Y'all go check that out. You feel me? And, um, man, that last one is tough. Um, mm, I got a song called uh, Gangsta and the Gentleman. The fire video we shot for that. I recorded that in, uh, in New York. Um, a big and them used to record that. But uh, Gangsta and the Gentleman is on a mixtape called uh, Night, Night in Manhattan. 
Mm -hmm. So, y'all go check that out, man. I'm about to drop that emergency line, and uh, I got a single with my boy, Greatness. That's going to go up. So, man, I'm just trying to work, keep it going. I record everything myself, make all the beats myself. So, like, one man band, you feel me? How hard is that? How hard is that, Be like, being your own engineer? Because, like, you don't really hear that many artists that are their own engineer their own producer like i know one of like like maybe like russ of course kanye mm -hmm. west of course but like like how hard is that process of Man, cutting like crazy. you know what's crazy bro uh, i was i went to a studio last night um it's actually harder if i wasn't the engineer they didn't get mm -hmm. the they didn't get the word that i engineered myself and at first like, the engineer kind of was you feel me he kind of was defensive i could tell like he wasn't fucking with that so <laughs> You know, after we talked about it, everything got good, and then they was trying to break their neck to make sure that I could have a microphone right there. So, you know, shout out them. I was at a Soul Asylum, Soul Asylum Studios, so shout out them, bro. But uh, for me, it'll be harder if somebody else engineered me. I think that'll kill my whole creative, per mm. whole creative process. Like, I always say that. I don't know, I just can't be saying running back. That Like, I, I just can't pitch it, you feel me? It's, I don't know, there's just something about the vibe in here, you feel me? I think that'll, like, fuck it up. I think I could do it. But like, it'll be awkward for me. Yeah. So you got this song, or you got a project actually. You got a project with the artist um, that's actually signed to Lil Wayne by the yeah. name of Flo. Yeah, man, that's uh, this bro. We actually meet, met after uh, his current circumstances. Bro in jail, so you know, he was looking for engineers that could uh, that could make him still rap from jail. You feel me? And uh, they happened to stumble across me, and since then, and we been banging. We just uh, recently dropped a tape called The Wolf and the Goat. You feel me? And, um, and I've been doing numbers of people loving it. But um, bro should be coming home real, real, real soon. It's looking real good. And um, we got a plan together. We're going to turn up. How did you make that connection? Like, how, Man, did, how did you? <laughs> it's really like a domino effect from years later. I recorded, like, somebody that's real close. Well, somebody that was real close to him was, like, putting some money up for some youngest. Probably, like, five years prior. Hmm. And uh, I know a couple other, a couple other people I record know the same dude. And uh, I guess Flo was looking for somebody that can make that shit sound listenable. And then uh, dude just linked him with me. Hmm. Shit, since then we've been banging tough. Shit, one day he was just like, bro, let's do a mixtape. So this shit crazy. It's like we got a little process, we got a little app, and then shit. I pull it up on the Pro Tools and mix it like anything else. Hmm. From, That's crazy. Yeah, man. So people crazy. can really record music from jail? Yeah, yeah, man. Anybody locked up, holler at your boy first class, bro. So make sure your shit get out, mix it, make it sound good and everything. Telling the people be like, "What do you got a studio in there?" I'm like, Lord, <laughs> like to me, I could tell the difference, like, cause I'm an engineer. But to the the average listener, they that should sound like dudes that be recording at their house. Mm. Feel me? I'm sound no different. You might have a whole nother fucking business that you could start with that. Like, though, that's for crazy, real. right? I mean, I thought about it after. I didn't know that I could even do that until you know me and dude, and then we came up with a with a with a process, and then okay, this works. Mm. Then we got it, you know. Perfected it a little bit and got it to sound. What's a the better. what's the hardest part about doing that type of process? Background noise. You can't control the background in jail, like at all. You have no control of it. Right. Fans on, and you feel me? Dudes laughing. It be all kinds of shit going on. I think that even makes it more authentic, though. Facts. Yeah. I think it's crazy. Like I really salute dude that he can even come up with the shit he come up with in them circumstances. Cause I'd be amazed. I feel like, you know, I always thought that like, them circumstances are like kind of kill your creativity. Hmm. But man, some of them boys do be saying, like, man, yeah, all right. Now nah, I get it, you feel me? Right. Yeah, That's right. dope. That's dope. And when can we expect this project? The project, I don't know, my mixtapes right now, man. Okay. Called the Wolf and the Goat, you feel me? Mr. Br Mr. Brazy Flow featuring First Class Rock. Believe that. What's the name of the project and how can they follow you on social media? The project called Emergency Landing. You know, I'm First Class Rock, so it's the first of the plane. But you know, with the pandemic, we ran out of backwards, so we had Emergency Landing, but it's more wood. And they'll be taken back off, you feel me? And then it's going to drop uh, July, early July, y'all. Stay tuned. All social media is at First Class Ross. You feel me? And uh, everything is at First Class Ross. YouTube, First Class Television. And man, y'all reach out to me, man. I should love, man. You feel me? Y'all get with me.